platform, welcome to all of you who are joining us right now. I started this a couple minutes early just to um, have everybody that's in the waiting room give a chance to hop on and um, just chat for a little bit. I always like to ask where people are from. There's a Puerto Rico. I love it. Um, but I wanted to ask today for sort of a different little icebreaker question. Um, is it cold yet where you are? It just started to get chilly. Probably Puerto Rico is not very cold. I've never been there, but I would think that that's pretty tropical, right? Um, but on Saturday here, it started to, no, not Saturday, um, day before yesterday. <laughs> My days are confused. Oh my gosh, what day of the week is it? Um, over yesterday, it started to get chilly. I'm really excited about Saturday. Um, my husband and I co-own a coffee shop and bed and breakfast in the town where we live. And um, we just got a new outdoor fireplace there and it's gonna be on tomorrow and it's gonna be super cozy and amazing and I'm super excited. We've got People from Sweden, Iowa, North Carolina, not cold at all, really. Are you dealing with rains from the hurricane in North Carolina? Also, I love the water quality in um, the Carolinas. Um, it always makes my hair do what it needs to do. I was thinking about that this morning. Myrtle Beach, 75 degrees. Rainy in Seattle. It's kind of rainy and gray here, too. Still in the 90s in Tampa. What? Well, thanks for joining us. Um, first fallish day. I mean, it's just so cool. Has everybody had their pumpkin spice latte? Can you get a pumpkin spice latte in Puerto Rico? Surely, right? Like Starbucks is everywhere, right? Okay. So welcome, welcome. <laughs> Guatemala, not too cold here. I have some friends that were uh, missionaries in Guatemala for years, and they loved it. They miss it so much. They still want to go back. Just a little rain from the hurricane. That's good. Good. Hi, Natalie. Hey, everybody. So what are you hoping to get out of today's webinar? Let me ask that question. I'm going to give everybody else um, a few more minutes um, to hop on here and join us. We had over a 1,000 people register for this webinar. So um, we're excited, super excited. But tell me, tell me what you're hoping to get out of the webinar today. I am so curious. So many people are typing. And if you're, if you know, if you're just saying, I just want to know what this planning thing is all about. Like a kick in the pants. Oh my gosh, I love it. An idea of how to fit everything I want to do in the next few minutes. Amy, what do you want to do? I'm curious. Tell me what you want to do. How do you, how do you get that all in? I think it starts, um, what do you want to do? Gain some more of motivation. These webinars motivate me. Shanice, did I say that right? Um, so I um, certainly think it's going to motivate you. I hope so. Grad school, launching a business. Oh my goodness, you are so busy. Motivation, organizational peace and establishing goals. I love it. We will talk about that. Strategic plan. Hey, there's an OKC. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Um, so I've seen a lot of stuff about goals and motivation. A lot of that direction. It just absolutely amazes me the number of people I hear from that are in grad school and using Day Designer for grad school. Um, those of you that are in that position, I am absolutely in awe of you. I was never a good test taker, and I um, feel like I barely made, out of, made it out of college. Um, but those of you that are um, pursuing extended education, I have to give you props. Uh, big time props. Tips on organizing. That might be a separate webinar, Suzanne. <laughs> And I don't know that I'm the right person to do that. I feel like organization, we just got done moving. We're in a rent house right now. And so I, I'm still organizing after being here for um, two weeks. 
Okay. Well, um, I'm going to dive in. I've got my handy dandy notes here written on a blank day designer page. Um, that's what I do <laughs> if I have a blank page in my planner. I don't plan my weekends a lot, so a lot of times my weekend pages end up being great notes pages. But I'll rip them out and um, use it. You can tape them. I can like tape them in on top of another page if I'm trying to keep organized notes like that. Um, please put a section in Data Designer for projects. Okay, Heather, noted. I love all the ideas. Love the ideas. Um, so many of you said um, something about goals. Um, today we're going to talk about um, the last three months of the year and finishing strong. Um, whenever I say um, finishing strong, what does that mean to you guys? Like when you, if you, in your mind, if you are hoping to finish the year strong, what does that mean? Um, Debbie says um, she wants to get past perfectionism. She freezes looking at the beautiful blank page. Yeah, we need to teach you how to make a mess because I feel like the frozen, um, the frozenness of perfectionism um, leads us to stall out and that's exactly what I want us to avoid um, heading into the last three months of the year um, not succumbing to the winter lazies um, keep working the plan and not abandoning it um, I love all this um, and with at least seven out of ten goals Love it, love it, love it. Not scrambling at the last minute to accomplish tasks. We're definitely going to talk about that in a few minutes. Not giving up. Finishing strong means to stay, means to remain motivated. Starting isn't a problem. Finishing is. Um, maintenance is. But I also, I thought starting isn't my problem. Finishing is my problem. That's what I've said for so long. So forgive me for um, paraphrasing, not procrastinating. Okay, so let's um, let's talk about goals, and then um, those of you who have thrown out some of the stuff that you're trying to get out of the webinar, um, ask me a specific question if I don't address it in talking about this, because I have a lot of life hacks and tips just floating around in my brain for how I deal with that stuff. I am definitely um, what the um, psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever they are. Um, psychologists um, call a defeated perfectionist, which means um, very often I don't, um, I don't attempt things that I think I'm not going to be able to win at. And I have found that the best way to recover from that, that, that anyway, that lead, that ends up resulting in procrastination, not starting things, um, definitely not finishing things, abandoning things, abandoning things midstream, and one of the things that I have found um, to do um, to alleviate some of this is set um, incremental goals. Um, and that's going to lead me to, uh, I can talk more about that if you guys have any questions. Um, it's called a defeated perfectionist. So instead of being an absolute perfectionist that just works really hard and stresses out and um, I just kind of, I just, it's not going to be perfect, so I'm not going to do it, sort of, is what, um, and that's not a conscious thing, it's a very subconscious thing, self-awareness um, brings that to the top, and I've uh, been working on that a lot in my life, yeah, I mean, I read a book, and that was, I was like, that was me, like, I'm a defeated perfectionist, um, <laughs> so many of you guys were like, oh my gosh, um, Okay, so I try to set smaller manageable goals, and we're at um, the beginning of the fourth quarter. This is the perfect time for us to review our goals. So I am, I'm just going to walk you through my process. Um, I am using the um, day designer. So this started in July, um, and I set some goals back in July. I'll show you my goal page. Um, it's really messed up because I write everywhere. I just would encourage you to um, make a big mess and um, <laughs> um, make a big mess and you know just lots of grace. So anyway, this is my this is my goal setting page. Um, this is what I wanted to accomplish in three months and. Um, um, 
I'll just I'll walk you through it. Um, I've updated my October already, so I'll show you how I do that. Um, but I wanted to make some healthy changes in my life. I wanted to um, start doing keto and intermittent fasting, um, and I've done that. So yay, checking that off. I want to continue that. So I have written. I just I just put my goals right here on this month. Um, how many goals do I work on at a time? No more than 15. <laughs> um, or no more than I can fit on this page. Actually, that's probably a better way to explain it. No more than I can fit on this page. As you can see, I've got a lot of room. Another thing that I think is important about um, planning and scheduling, a lot of you guys said you had to remain motivated and you didn't want to you know, succumb to the winter lazies and things like that. Um, one thing that I recommend is actually planning and scheduling time for you to do that. Like, leave a little white space in your planners, literally um, in your planners, leave a little white space in your mind, in your life, in your homes, in your closets, um, not so that you can fill it up, but just so that you can rest. In graphic design, we talk about white space. Actually, it's called negative space. I like the term white space better because there's not as much negative connotation, <laughs> obviously, with that. It's more positive thinking, and I love that. But we have to leave white space when we're designing a page um, to, in order to give the, the eye a chance to rest. Um, and I think that's important everywhere in our lives, too. It's, like I said, it's important in our mind, in our homes, in our closets, our kitchens. I've got a kitchen behind me. Um, but just leaving a little space to rest and allow yourself, give yourself. You're not going to give yourself permission. I am giving you permission right now to um, succumb to the winter lazies. Um, just plan it into your schedule and allow yourself to really enjoy that time. I mean, this is the season of holiday and family um, and um, we we really need to stop and savor those moments and really be present with our people um, I had to go to a funeral a couple weeks ago um, one of my cousin's kids passed away it was so sad um, at 16 he got in a car wreck he was an amazing 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 kid and it brought our family closer together. Um, there was a celebration of life. It was so good, but it has really changed my perspective on being present with my family this season. Um, so thank you guys for the condolences. Um, I actually just say that as an illustration and a reminder um, to not beat yourself up over um, the sweet things in life, like the really precious things. Um, to stop and take time and enjoy those. So um, another thing that I would say on that is don't um, feel like that you need to plow through your goals in order to be a success. I think you know, I know you will be a success if you um, give yourself permission to abandon those goals in exchange for um, what matters most, in exchange for spending your time and your energy on the things that are most important in your life. And that, um, for most of us, is our people and um, those around us, our friends, our family, um, that we need to give our time to. So if you're, if you're here and you're just starting to set goals for the end of the year, um, that's one thing I would encourage you to, to do, is um, A, give yourself permission to abandon goals that aren't working. Um, that is completely and totally fine. That's called giving yourself grace. And, um, you know, you're in charge of the deadlines in your life. And if you're not going to meet them, just move them so that you can continue to work and be a success. Um, <clears throat> and then the second thing is um, f spend time with your family and your friends this holiday season. Um, and we're going to talk about how to plan and <laughs> in addition to that plan to do that. Somebody had a question back there. I saw that kind of jogged something, and I'll see if it comes back to me. Um, okay, so goal review. So I um, talked a little bit about, um, I just basically, um, for me, um, somebody says, great question, how do you not over multitask? You plan white space. Um, you put the, 
um, there is um, there's a an illustration that um, you know self help gurus use a lot of time, and they get a jar. Um, I'm just I've got this glass of water here. I'll use this as an example, but you know they they're on stage. They take a jar and um, they put sand in it, and then they put gravel in it, and then they put medium sized rocks. And then they put big rocks in it, and they can't get all of this stuff to fit in a jar. But um, they put the big rocks in first, and then the medium rocks, and then allow the gravel to filter down, and then put the sand in, everything fits in the jar. And it's this idea of big rocks first. What really matters? The order in which you prioritize is very important. And um, I use the acronym HEART. I talk about this a lot. Um, I do heart goals is how I said it, and um, I'm doing some of this stuff um, right alongside my day designer, and I'm talking more about that on my personal um, feed, but um, it's this analogy of um, self-care is first, and um, then your people, um, then your personal growth, then your resources, um, your financial goals, and then lastly your business goals, which all too often we put career and business goals ahead of the more important things in life. Um, let me go back to my notes because I'm talking about so much stuff. Um, here's another tip I have for you guys. As long as I'm making progress, it's not considered failure. Too many of us think that failure is, um, like we have this definition of failure that says that if we don't achieve this perfect status, then therefore we've failed and we are a failure. And we fully embrace and adopt that label as a failure. And a few years ago I was like, I'm over that. I'm done considering myself a failure. Um, I am going to start celebrating the wins in my life and the progress. Um, so one thing I do if I don't feel like I'm reaching my goals for the year, um, and again, oh, the question somebody asked was what's an example of um, breaking my goals down? So I'm going to get back to that in a second. Um, but one thing that I do is um, I just realize that I've made progress. I measure my progress, not the result. The, the whole thing about goal setting is it's not so important to – achieve the goal. It's it's not so important to get to that destination. It's about the path and it's about the journey. And um, the journey is what makes us a better person. It's it's not about the goal setting. It's about who you become in the process of setting those goals. I mean, look at goal setting as a journey instead of an achievement or a destination. We're able to give ourselves a lot more grace. Um, how do you set... Um, how do you break goals down? Like very, very simply. And I do this with my to-do list as well. Um, if anything is going to take me, and you need to decide this for yourself, um, over a certain period of time, um, if it's going to take you over um, 20, this is one thing I do. If it's going to take me over 20 minutes to finish a task, very often in order to motivate myself, I break it down into smaller steps. And then, um, so maybe a big, task would be um, something that's hard for me to do is work out. So an example of breaking down um, the task of working out um, would be um, getting dressed. <laughs> this sounds so elementary, but you guys, it works. Um, step one, step two, put on my shoes. Um, step three, go for a warm-up walk um, and enjoy it. And then um, probably step four, or maybe step three would be take my headphones, and then step four would be start walking. And then I know I'm going to end up running because I've done all those tiny steps. So instead of just being like, oh, go running, I, I really break it down in my mind. Same thing with um, a weight loss goal is a great example. Um, instead of saying, I want to lose 20 pounds by December 31st, um, I'm going to say, I want to lose five pounds by December 31st. And that's another way that we can set ourselves up for success. And I mean, it's just, it's really all about setting achievable goals. Um, and we're sort of like mind hacking ourselves when we do that. Um, because um, if we achieve the weight loss goal of five pounds, we're going to feel more motivated uh, because of that win to go on to achieving um, 
the weight loss goal of 20 pounds. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Hopefully that helps on goal setting. Um, just make sure that you are programming your mind. I woke up this morning. If you'll allow me to um, go here. I was thinking about um, the renewing of our minds. I was thinking about um, our choices. We have a choice to um, take captive our thoughts and then um, turn the negative thoughts into positive thoughts and then focus on those. And there's actually neuroscience that supports um, changes in our neural pathways. The shape of our brain changes um, when we think about positive things um, instead of negative things. And we have the choice and the control on whether to do that or not. Um, so that's another thing I would encourage you to do. If you feel like you're failing at goals, replace that thought. This is how you can finish strong. Replace those thoughts about failure um, with what you have done. Look at your progress. Focus on your success. You have been a winner this year, and you have to acknowledge that. Um, that's super important for um, in order to start 2019 strong and then make continued progress in life. <laughs> okay, I feel like I am. Somebody said preach. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm on a roll. Um, but that's a good feeling. Thank you guys for all the conversation and feedback. Um, I love Lorraine's comments. Um, sometimes you've had to change the priority of your goals. That is so true. Um, sometimes um, we'll set a goal and we realize that something else is taking precedence over that. That's happened to my husband and I. And actually this year we um, made some big changes in our lives and we've looked back and been like, oh, that's those weren't the right decisions. And so um, we've realized and are communicating now um, and focused on some different goals. And um, so that is actually, uh, that's actually a thing that happens. Thanks for that, Lorraine. Um, okay, so after I've done a goal review and all of the positive um, self-talk and all that stuff, um, I ask myself, um, what's next? And so here we are at the beginning of the fourth quarter. What's next? The holidays, right? Um, but here's the thing. It's, it's going to be, it's really easy for us to think, oh my gosh, I'm just going to you know, run off and start planning my holidays. Um, but the big rocks first, um, the most important stuff needs to go, go in there first. Um, make sure that in trying to plan your holidays that you don't neglect those big rocks. So it, big rocks would be like, uh, pretty much anything that is going to be a daily habit that helps you further your goal. So an example of that um, would be, like back to the weight loss example, um, working out consistently, um, drinking your water, taking your vitamins. Um, lots of the personal habit things are very important. Um, it could be um, continuing to read books to um, help us renew our minds and adjust our mindsets. Um, um, my dailies I wrote in my notes just to share with you guys, with you guys are, Read, write, steps, and water. And I write those um, right above my, this is kind of my, I do I do projects and goals right here. Just remind me when I'm planning my month that um, this is the stuff I need to be focused on. And then I do up here, I do um, just this reminder for my dailies. I don't plan, um, I don't use the daily until the day of. And so by having that there, if I've gotten off track for some reason, I can just look back and, you know, write that stuff down and um, um, fill it in. Um, so um, let me think, what else? Um, yeah. What's next holidays, but don't abandon um, the daily habits that are necessary for um, continued progress. That's another way to finish strong. <clears throat> okay. Now on to holidays um, because holidays produce, um, how many of you feel like holidays produce a massive amount of stress in your life? Am I alone in that or does anybody else feel like the holidays are just um, so much stress? Yeah, Becky says. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's just, it's like, I feel like sometimes my whole life stops. And I just focus on holiday stuff. Like I just, 
Um, in fact, I mean, I at the first company I ever started and, and grew, I was working 18 hour days in the holiday season. And when that company folded, I just decided I'm done. Like I'm not, no more 18 hour holiday days. I'm reorganizing my life around the principle of holiday enjoyment. <laughs> um, so um, one thing, what if you're on this webinar and you're watching, um, if you've signed up for it, one thing that um, the Data Designer team is going to do is we are going to send you um, our holiday planning kit. Um, it's, a, it's a packet. Um, I have the 2017 version printed out for myself right now. Um, but we're going to send this to you next um, by the end of next week. Um, and the cool thing is, is there's um, there's a lot of different worksheets in it. Um, the best one is this one. Um, it's holiday prep and plans, and it's just this simple um, countdown um, to to the holidays. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. To, I'm just gonna tell you. Um, I, I walked through this process the other day in preparation for this webinar. Um, the first thing that I can tell you is that now is the time to get started. Um, this is the way planning is the thing um, that's going to prevent chaos in our lives. Um, partly because, no, not even partly. I'm just going to say fully because it gives us a vision for what this look like. And none of us have a crystal ball. Or we're not trying to predict the future. But when we envision it, um, forces align to help that vision come to fruition. And we are more prepared. Um, so it's about prevention and preparation for the holidays. So one question you can ask yourself is, well, what has stressed me out in years past? Um, for me, one thing is Christmas cards. Last year, I ordered them the day after Thanksgiving and was like, oh, this is awesome. That was the earliest I've ever ordered Christmas cards. Um, this year, I think I'm going to like start that process maybe next week. Um, also, it's going to help the budget. It's going to spread. I mean, that's a big expense, so it's going to spread that out, and I'm grateful for that. Um, so on this on this worksheet that you'll get in the mail, um, it just it says six weeks prior, five weeks prior. I'll show you guys mine. You know, three, two, one, on, and so forth. The first thing that I would recommend thinking about um, as you look toward the year end is what's the last shipping day for you that you need to order stuff by to have it arrive by the holiday, by whatever date you need it. Put the last shipping day on your calendar right now, on your planner. Like maybe even turn to December and write it, you know, in your data center. Um, I've got mine written down right here. Um, if you're if you're celebrating Christmas, um, well, I just I'll, my my last shipping deadline is Thursday, December twentieth. If that helps anybody, um, I need I know that it needs I can pay overnight if, on that day and it can arrive on Friday, um, because um, Christmas Eve is a Monday. They probably will deliver packages on Monday, but again. I'm into white space and buffer. Like that's what's going to help me enjoy my holiday season. So um, I just don't want to be stressing out. So I have put order gifts by December 20th at the latest on my calendar. So there you go. There's that. <laughs> you can check that one off your list if you're into Christmas. Um, the other, the next thing that I would um, encourage you to think about. Um, is what sort of volunteer stuff do you usually have on your calendar around this time of year? And schedule that. Um, my church does um, sort of like an angel tree thing. And one of my favorite things in the whole flipping world is to wrap presents. I know, it's weird. Um, but I love it. And last year, I think um, we wrapped about 450 gifts for um, local kids. And um, I am really looking forward to that process this year. That's what I can contribute to that. There's other, there are other people that deliver them and organize the project and things like that. But um, I am going to have to schedule some time to wrap a lot of gifts. So I put that on my calendar for December 21st through 22nd. Um, so any, any volunteer hours or anything, get that on there. 
if you're going to host any parties, um, get those invitations out now and start spreading the word, telling your friends and family. Um, that's another that's another check thing, a checklist thing you can do. Okay, the next thing that I did was I pulled out my kids' school schedule because there are always programs and events and stuff like that, and I added that stuff to um, this sheet. And I actually add it to both this sheet because this is kind of like a overview, like a really quick, just um, take a quick perspective, big picture perspective on it. Um, but then I also add it to my monthly, uh, my monthly overview. And somebody asked, how do I plan my week with the daily pages? Um, I let me get, let me come back to that. I can actually give you an example on that. Let me keep think, thinking about um, holiday stuff right now. Um, okay, after I added the school stuff, then I just added other stuff that is on my calendar. Um, I'm doing some Heart Goals webinars between now and the end of the year. I'm hosting some mastermind events. Um, and then five weeks prior to Thanksgiving is, or prior to Christmas is Thanksgiving. So that is an important thing to note on your holiday, um, um, plan and two worksheets that will come in your, um, holiday kit, your worksheet planning kit are, um, this entertaining checklist, um, which is just going to prompt you to think about, your guests, the menu, um, notes, what you need to do, flowers and decor, music and entertainment, other shopping lists. Um, so I use this. And then also this holiday menu planner. Um, I don't know about you, but for the past two years, I've done Thanksgiving on my own. Um, zero stress um, because of this format. Um, I free stuff, I get started a couple weeks in advance, and I'm not preparing food for, um, we don't even have that much freezer space. Um, we're not preparing food for, we're only preparing food for like eight to 10 people. Um, but it, I mean, just when you spread it out, it's really, really simple. Um, and that is all due to this menu planning sheet. So if you're hosting Thanksgiving and you're responsible for the menu, um, this is gonna be a huge lifesaver for you guys. Um, so that is a little bit on Thanksgiving. Um, let me see. Okay, things that I think need to be done before Thanksgiving. And when you walk through your list backwards to forwards, when you start with um, the holidays and then move move forward to the present, you'll think of stuff you need to do. So stuff that I thought of was I need to order my kids holiday clothes. Um, I always forget this, holiday clothes and holiday pajamas. I need to order my boys shirts, I need to order my daughter a dress. Um, just something that they can wear to the Christmas programs, things like that. Um, the holiday cards I already touched on. Um, other things worth thinking about are um, Decor, like Christmas lights, whatever your decorations are going to be. Um, some people need to take a photo for their holiday cards. Um, if you haven't scheduled that, um, a lot of people do that during the summer on vacation and stuff like that, which I think is a great idea. Um, we have a friend that's a photographer, and she takes pictures of us all the time. But just getting that on the, on the list is important. Buying stamps for holiday cards. Um, setting a budget, stocking stuffers, um, stocking stuffers and budget ruin me every Christmas. I, oh, Tori says she bakes her Christmas cookies in November and freezes them. I love that. Um, and then I said, I already said send invites early. Um, okay, there's also this um, holiday bucket list in the packet. Um, I love this list. We have some traditions we do as a family. We make um, like Christmas caramel corn with, you know, chocolate and sprinkles and all kinds of stuff on it. And um, I just um, I just put a few things down. I mean, really simple. But this is going to prompt me to add these things to my planner to schedule these things. Um, so that's a cool sheet that's in the pocket as well. 
Um, then we've got um, holiday gift ideas to start thinking about that. This is helpful because I'll think of a gift idea for a kid or, you know, my in-laws or something, and then not write it down, and I've forgotten. And my mom always texts and says, what do your kids want for Christmas? And I never have an answer. I'm using that this year. Going to have an answer. Um, thank you, note record. Um, super fun making a list and checking it twice because we all like to feel like Santa at times. Um, yeah, and there's there's some other worksheets that are some of our um, most downloaded worksheets on Day Designer, like the daily page. There's a weekly planner in there. Um, it's coming to you by the end of next week, and I hope you guys enjoy it. We've also got um, a recording of this webinar happening, so if you need to um, watch it again, you can do that. Um, okay. The last point I have for you guys is... Um, and this is this is a little bit different, but just synthesize as much information as possible. And what I mean by synthesize is um, really take it in. And maybe I need to find a better way to explain this, but this is what works for me. Um, I have to have total quiet, and I have to like literally visually um, absorb the information, which is why I need a planner. I have to put the event on my calendar, I have to imagine in my mind what that event is going to look like, and that is going to trigger for me other things that I need to do. That's like, oh, I've got to order holiday pajamas. Oh, I've got to order holiday outfits for the kids. You know, things like that. When I envision what I want the end of the year, the holiday season to look like, um, and really envision it, absorb it, synthesize it, I will create more to-dos in my mind. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and it's not like I'm trying to find more to-dos. I just want to make sure that I'm working toward the outcome. And by visualizing what I want it to look like, I have a clearer picture of what I need to do to get there. And that's holiday season, end of year goals, anything. Um, OK, so there were some questions. Um, and I can take some more. Um, there was a question about any tips for paying off debt goals. Um, I have one, and it might sound really simple, but it's Track Weekly. Um, I have gotten myself into debt more than once in life. And um, I'm not one of those people. Um, I'm not totally a Dave. Ramsey person, which might be like the wrong thing to say. I do believe in um, uh, debt-free living, but um, tracking stuff weekly financially has been the biggest game changer for me in paying off debt. Um, it creates focus, and you just you just it's kind of like losing weight. You just kind of get fired up about it. And you love the momentum, and you just keep it going. So that's that's my tip for that. Um, how do I plan my week with the daily pages? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Um, for weekly planning, I use, alongside my flagship day designer, the flagship day designer is what we call our spiral bound, just dropped an ink pen on my white jeans. Um, the flagship planner is what we call our spiral bound um, hardcover planner. This is flagship, it comes in two sizes, mini and regular. I don't have the mini to show you um, the size on that. Um, um, the, <laughs> um, so here's what I do on weekly. Um, so this is, this is what I use for weekly. It's called Today and To Do. You can, um, it's, um, I don't know if we have any in inventory right now. Um, so Julie, you'll have to tell me, um, guys, my goal for the rest of this webinar is to stop saying, um, here's how I do my week. I don't always fill everything out, but this is an example of a, a weekly, a weekly to do. What I love about the day and to do is that it's non dated. I had to fill in all of my, I filled in all my numbers at the beginning of the year. I super love this product. You guys, 
it allows me to flex. It's flexible. Like if there's one word for this thing, it's flexible. If I'm in a hectic season and I need a daily planner, I've got my flagship. If I'm in a slower season and I just need a weekly planner, I use um, my today and to do. It also does have daily pages in it. Um, some of which get used for all kinds of notes. Um, so I will hop over and use a daily page like that. Yes, these are in stock. You can get these at daydesigner.com. Um, but um, I, th this is how I plan my, this is how I plan my week. And then anytime a week gets too busy, um, I, I will, um, like this would be, this is sort of like an example of a busy day in the middle of a week. I'll jump over and use a daily page, either in my flagship planner or my um, today and to do. So I do use multiple planners. I am that person. I know that that does not work for everybody. Um, works for me. Um, okay, so that's how I plan my week. Um, another way I plan my week is I use um, in the flagship. I put a lot of stuff on the monthly overview um, to help me. I, I use monthly overviews a lot for weekly planning. Um, okay, next question. Um, Jen asks, well, just now, would the today and to-do be useful for larger projects? I think so. Um, again, it's that flexibility. Um, it is easy to carry around. You can take it to the office. Um, and then the individual daily pages have an extra notes section on them that would be probably good for project planning. You could actually use, um, again, like get messy, get creative with this. Use your planner in whatever way works for you. Um, but you could use those individual daily pages for project planning pages, and that would probably be super organized and helpful. Um, okay, Rose asked a question about how do you how do you categorize and divide heart goal segments into the analogy of the big or into, yeah the big rocks analogy. Um, that's that's why I actually came up with the acronym of heart goals is um, those are kind of the big rocks. It's like you have five big rocks and um, each of those life segments, each of those categories is going to have different tasks. Um, for every person. What you need to do in the um, self-care category is going to be different than what somebody else needs to do. Um, same thing with your people category, same thing with your learning category, same thing with your finance category, same thing with your business category. Um, it's all going to be different. Um, but the trick is to stay balanced in life. We are sort of looking at all five categories at once. Um, the, the acronym makes it really easy to remember. Um, H is help yourself. E is everyone else. A is always be learning. R is resources and responsibilities. T is trade and talent. Um, and I will use that acronym on a day when I feel lost. Um, I'll use it um, plan, to plan a week. I'll, you know, I'll just if I just need to double check myself and make sure life is balanced, I'll walk myself through that acronym, look at my calendar, and, um, and and try to figure it out from there. Another thing about balance, I'll just touch on this really fast. I know a lot of us talk about trying to find balance in life, and here's an aha moment for you. Um, when we say we're looking for balance in life, what, um, what's, what spectrum of time, what length of time are we looking at? Are we looking for balance every day? Are we looking for balance every week? Are we looking for balance over the course of a month? Or are we looking for balance over the course of a lifetime? Because I think, I mean, it's just, it stands to reason. I mean, there just will be. Like, life is life. It's messy and chaotic. And um, there are seasons that are going to feel out of balance. But when we look at our life as a whole, um, like when we, you know, at the end of our days, when we look back, um, you know, will we have lived a balanced life? So each day is probably not going to feel very balanced. Um, probably the, the longer length of time you look at to determine what kind of balance you're trying to achieve, um, the more satisfied you're going to be. Um, there go the M's again. 
So looking at, you know, looking at your week and saying, how do I find balance this week? Or how do I find balance this month? Or how do I find balance this year is going to be a better question to ask when we talk about that balance question. Okay, uh, let's see. Shanice asks, how productive am I really being if I'm multitasking? According to the experts and a ton of research, not very productive. It takes 38 minutes to get back on track after an interruption. And multitasking is essentially cramming a bunch of interruptions into our time. So not, not very productive. Do I also use calendars on my phone? Yes, I use an iCal that I share with my husband for family things and work schedules so that he knows whenever I have a webinar or a conference call and I know when he has a conference call or whatever, an appointment. So we do that and then all that stuff eventually makes its way over to my calendar. I'm big on writing things down, really big on writing things down. Rewriting things multiple times. The more you write things, the more you're able to synthesize that information there's something about getting it out of your head and onto paper. It's like you keep it from swirling around as this constant to-do, and it just sort of gets done. I realize it's not magic, but it is neuroscience. Um, okay. Tika says, please explain annual big goals with many steps. Career, remodel a house, install landscape, and write chapters of a new book. Oh, those are all huge, Tika. Um, versus simple errands, cleaning, etc. What goes on monthly goals, three each day, and daily to-dos? That is a great question. Another thing that I use in Heart Goals, um, and again, I talk about this, I use Heart Goals in conjunction with my day designer. Um, I talk about this more um, on my personal feed, and I'm going to be doing some webinars on it before the end of the year. Um, and we're launching it next Wednesday. Um, one thing, it's a digital product, it's just download and print, but um, one of the things that you, that I would recommend doing in your goal setting process, let's say you have a big list of goals, um, which, you know, if you use the goal setting process in Day Designer, you're going to get a list of goals. Heart, the Heart Goals method is a little bit more in-depth, um, but when you get um, that big list of goals, just ask yourself, do I need to do these on a daily, weekly, monthly? quarterly, yearly, or is this a long-term basis? And depending on your answer for each of those goals, it'll take you two seconds. You'll be shocked at how fast you go. Um, so like if like your goals are, um, you know, career. So I would say, what do you want to do in your career? Well, you want a promotion. Okay, how long is that going to take? You could be like three years. Okay, you put, so it's a long-term goal. So just categorize each of those things. Um, the longer it takes to achieve that goal, the more likely it's going to be that you need to break it down. That's what I would recommend. Um, the more you break it down, maybe into uh, monthly, weekly, or daily tasks, the easier it is going to be to make progress. Um, it's about tiny steps and not really big things. There used to be some theory on, um, they called it eat that frog. And when I say they, I'm talking about self-help gurus. <clears throat> um, but it was this concept of doing the hard thing first. and in my humble opinion, that doesn't work. We actually, our brains release dopamine whenever we check something off a list, and that dopamine produces actually sort of like an, addict, an addiction response, and we end up building momentum. So if you feel like you're addicted to your to-do list, that's why. Um, but we end up um, achieving more when we get that dopamine release going. It helps create momentum in our days. It helps create momentum in our weeks, et cetera. So break it down is my answer to almost everything. Um, Carrie says the eat that frog concept was from Brian Tracy. Yeah, it just, I, I tried it for so long and I stalled out. It's that defeated perfectionism thing that we talked about at the very beginning. What do I think of the Pomodoro focus tool? I've never actually done Pomodoro. Pomodoro, so for those of you that are wondering what that is, I think, and I here's what I do do. Pomodoro is some kind of there's some kind of timer. I think it looks like a tomato. Um, I'm big on setting a timer. Like just if my house is feeling cluttered, if my brain is feeling cluttered, 10 minutes is going to solve that problem. I will just go set the timer and clean 
and pick up and tidy whatever is around me for 10 minutes. You can get so much done around your house in 10 minutes. Um, same thing with writing. Sometimes it's really hard to start writing. Uh, but if I just say you have to write something for 10 minutes, <laughs> I'll start, I'll be typing, and I'll just start with, I don't know what to write at all. This is a terrible day, or this is a great day. And I start rambling, and the next thing I know, I've got a thought and a concept. So the timer thing definitely works. That's the life hack I use a lot. How do I plan keto or some other life-changing approach? Do you clear out other goals for a stint? I've never cleared out goals. So back to breaking the goals down. When you start to look at tasks from um, what needs to happen on a monthly, weekly, and daily basis, you'll start to be able to see how they all work together. It's I don't stop one thing to focus on another. I realize that Keto, for those that are asking, is a ketogenic diet approach, and that's a completely different topic. I'm not going to go there, but if I'm going to do anything diet-wise, it's once a week. I have to do a meal, meal plan and shop and preferably some meal prep for the week so that things are planned out. There's no need for me to you know, stop a, a daily goal or a habit goal of trying to drink more water or get in more steps, things like that. I find that when our goals all, we, we allow them to relate to each other, that everything works better. It's back to that, that balance concept. If I stop working on self-care stuff, my business life is going to you know, spin out of control. If I stop working on financial goals, my family's life is going to spin out of control. If I stop working on, you know, so it just, it's all interrelated and it's about tiny, tiny steps that allow us to feel progress instead of big, massive progress. One minute a day adds up to six hours, over six hours over the course of a year. That's an example of tiny progress. Who would imagine that if you do something for 60 seconds a day, by the end of the year, you will have spent six hours doing that. So, I mean, I couldn't imagine like hopping on a treadmill and running for six hours right now. But if I run for 60 seconds a day, well, you know, so if you start multiplying that minute and say, well, if I run for 10 minutes a day, you know, how, how long, how much is that going to add up to the end of the year? Um, so that's the best way to make progress on a goal. Okay. Any other questions? Those are great questions. Thanks for asking, guys. I just would encourage you to, um, you'll get the, um, we will send you the holiday planning kit by the end of next week. I would encourage you guys to rewatch this and just enjoy this season. Just enjoy the process of planning. Give yourself Grace, um, that's how you finish strong. It's not going to be holding ourselves hard and fast um, to things that might not even be possible to achieve. It's about recognizing the progress that we have made and um, celebrating that. Uh, yes, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to other and that's on my personal site on my about page. How much of my goals do I delegate to other people? Not much of my goals get delegated to other people. I assume personal responsibility for my goals, but I also will assign tasks whenever my time is better spent focusing on something else. I think it's important to ask for help. I think it's uh, there's no shame in doing that at all. That's incredibly important. Shanice, thanks for joining us. Thanks for chatting. It's been really good to have you on here. Um, just help in achieving them. I don't talk about my goals to a lot of people. I don't, I exp I'm pretty transparent on webinars like this with you guys because um, I just want to encourage you and I find that you guys encourage me a ton too. So on that note, thank you for joining us today. Um, Amy, there is an individual preview page um, in the holiday kits. You can download it right now on daydesigner.com, but it will also be part of that holiday kit that's coming next year. 
um, the um, planning pages and the, the planning worksheets that are in front of Day Designer are only in the planners themselves. There's not a way to see those online, but the daily page is in there. Um, they ship really fast, like next day, if not same day. Tori, I feel energized too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Elizabeth, thanks for posting that. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Um, and just join us again. Follow us at on, follow us on Instagram or Facebook at the Day Designer on um, on Facebook or Instagram. We're going to be doing more of these, I think. And um, it's just y'all are awesome and love the momentum and thanks for the support, all that stuff. Have a great weekend, a great day, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>